everyone, it's Jennifer from Fiberflux. Welcome back to week two of the 2021 Fiberflux Spring Crochet Along. We are working on this gorgeous spun sugar cardigan. And we last week we talked about the supplies, a little bit of the sizing, more detailed sizing can be found on the blog, and um, a little bit about how the project is put together. We today are going to be making the two panels. So basically we have two shawls, if you will, two long rectangles, and we're going to be stitching those up today, learning about the multiples and how to make it wider or narrower, depending on what you need for your particular cardigan. And then next week we are gonna be seaming things up and kind of constructing our cardigan. So today you're gonna need your hook, your yarn, and um, we're gonna be working these up, making each panel, and I'm gonna give you instructions on how to make them the same dimension-wise, and our beautiful self-striping yarn will be doing a lot of the color work for us. So let's get started. Be sure and also hop on over to our Ravelry group and our Facebook group to connect with other makers for the crochet along. You can show off your work, you can talk about colors and different yarns that you may be using. Um, you can ask questions there. It's a really nice kind of supportive environment when you're making these together and a fun place to hang out as well. Also, if you're on social media, be sure and use the hashtag FiberFluxCal to show off your work. It's so much fun to see what everybody's working on. Okay, so to begin, what we're gonna do is chain uh, 52 chains. Now, if you need your panels to be wider, remember they're gonna go, we're gonna have two up the front and they're both gonna go over the shoulder like that and then we're gonna seam them um, in the back and under the arm. So what you wanna do, if you need to make yours wider or narrower, just know that it's a multiple of three plus one. So what that means if you're not familiar with multiples is that when you're doing your starting chain, all that means is you go three plus three plus three plus three plus three, and then just add one more chain once you get the width that you want, okay? So you can change your panels and make them wider or narrower if you need to, okay? So what I would recommend is to do the starting chain, we're gonna do 52 chains, and just see if that's wide enough for you or narrow enough for you. If you need it to be narrower, wider, et cetera, you can kind of like hold it up to yourself. And there is more detailed sizing information on the blog as well. So let's begin by putting a slip knot on our hook. Now let me zoom way in so you can see what I'm doing here. We're gonna do a very easy V stitch and it'll show off these lovely colors if you're doing a cake like me, very beautifully, okay? So wrap the yarn around your fingers to make a loop bring the yarn behind the loop, reach in with your hook, bring up that loop and tighten. Next, like I mentioned before, we're gonna do a starting chain of 52. So to make a chain, wrap the yarn around the hook and bring it through the loop. That's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, forty-nine, fifty, fifty-one, 10, 49, 50, 51, and 52. So here's our starting chain. And once again, you might wanna like hold this up, see how it looks, and get a sense of the width of your two uh, panels for your sweater, okay? So then what we're gonna do is start working our Vs across. For row one, we want to work the first V in the fourth chain from the hook. So this loop here does not count. We're gonna go one, two, three, and four. So in that chain right there, what we're gonna do is work our first V. So to make our Vs, we need to do a double crochet, chain one, double crochet. So to make a double crochet, wrap the yarn around the hook, insert the hook into that chain, bring up a loop, you'll have three loops on the hook, wrap yarn around the hook, bring it through the first two loops, wrap yarn around the hook, bring it through the last two loops. Then we're going to chain one, and then in that same chain, we're gonna work another double crochet. And that will make our first V of the row. So then what we want to do is skip two chains. So one, two, and in the chain after that, we'll work another V. So once again, double crochet, chain one, double crochet, just like that, okay? Okay, so we're just going to keep doing that all the way across. Skip two chains, and the chain after that, work your next V double crochet, chain one, double crochet. 
Let's do a few more of these together and then we can work on our own. Skip the next two chains and in the chain after that, work your next V, double crochet, chain one, and double crochet on that same chain. Okay, so let's keep doing the same sequence all the way across and then when we get back, we'll finish up row one and transition onto row two. We've made it to the end of the row. I just have three chains left here. So we're gonna skip the next two chains and in that very last chain, what we're gonna do is just work a double crochet to finish up the row. So row one is complete. We have a nice little strip of V stitches. All right, let's move on to row two. Row two is actually the row that you'll repeat for the rest of your two uh, panels um, or strips or whatever you want to call them. We're, we're just making like, like I mentioned before, two long shawls and we're gonna seam them together, okay? So row two is what you'll do over and over for the rest of uh, both of these, okay? So then what you wanna do is chain three to move on to row two. One, two, three, turn your work. Now, all we're going to be doing for this row, we're not going to be counting or skipping anything. We're just going to be working a V into each V from the previous row, okay? So, in the written pattern on the blog, I call this the chain one space because we did a double crochet, chain one, double crochet, and that created a space, our little V space. So, what we want to do is work in that chain one space. So, we're going to begin the row by working a double crochet, chain one, double crochet into that first V. So, double crochet chain one, double crochet. And as you can see, because we worked into the V from the previous row, they're now kind of stacked on top of one another. Okay, gives it a super easy lacy look. Okay, hop on over to that next V and do the same thing. Double crochet, chain one, double crochet. Hop to the next V, same thing, double crochet, chain one, double crochet. All right, and we're just gonna do this all the way across. And once again, when we get towards the end of the row, um, we'll rejoin and I'll show you how to finish it up. All right, just coming up to the end of row two, I'm working my very last V, double crochet, chain one, double crochet. And then all we're gonna do to finish up the row is to work a double crochet in the turning chain space. So if you remember when we did our turning chain and turned, um, what it does is creates this little space on the side. So you can see the side of the V and the turning chain. So in between there is a space. We're just gonna work a double crochet right into that space. Sometimes it can sort of get smushed and pushed down by the V, but if you kind of open it up, you can see it. So just work a double crochet in that turning chain space. So row two is complete. And I'm just gonna zoom out a little bit so you can see a little bit better. So once again, we're going to work row two over and over and over again until your uh, strip that we're making is as long as you would like it to be. And what I mean by that is at some point you'll want to decide how long you want your cardigan to be. Do you want it to be waist length? If so, you'll want their, your strip to start at your waist, come up over your shoulder and back down to the front of your waist. If you want it to be knee length, you'll start at the back of the knee, come up over and around the shoulder and back down to the front of the knee, okay, and so forth, and anything in between. I mean, you can make this super long, you can make it um, waist length, etc. cetera. But um, I'm gonna keep working my row two, and when we rejoin, um, our strip will be nice and long, and I'll give you some dimensions that I came up with, but this is very customizable. You can make it however long you'd like it to be. So I'm gonna keep going with my yarn cakes. We're gonna have some fun color changes coming up. And when we rejoin, this will be much longer and I'll be able to share some dimensions with you. All right, just working that very last stitch. And what we're gonna do now is cut the yarn, grab your scissors and just cut the yarn. Just leave a, a decent enough tail that you can weave that in there in a little bit. I wanted to show you, I saved, I probably could have gotten another row out of this, but I wanted to save it. It's a couple of yards um, for seaming later. I'm also gonna do that with some of um, the other cakes, just so I have a little bit to seam. I don't wanna use 100% of the yarn on the two panels because um, you do need a little bit of yarn to seam, okay? So I'm just gonna put that aside till later. Now go ahead and wrap the yarn around the hook, bring the tail through and tighten. Now, a couple things, I wanted to give you some dimensions and I couldn't wait to hop back on here because as I worked this up, 
and you can see I have some tails to even. As I worked this up, I just was so in love with all of these beautiful, beautiful colors and the gold um, metallic thread through it just really looks so beautiful. So we have one panel done. Now I am going to go ahead and show you, this is two cakes. So as you can see, my color sort of ended abruptly. That will be at the shoulder. So part of this will spill down the front of you. Part of this will spill down the back of you. But if you really want to kind of transition it more of an ombre like the rest of the colors do, you could pull your cake apart and just um, work it um, and have more control over the colors. You could pull each color section out and work it that way. I wasn't really super worried about it. I kind of like the way it looks. Um, but as you can see, this was one of my cakes and this was one of my cakes right here. Okay. So I'm using two cakes per panel for total, like we talked about before. And I'm going to show you a picture now. I snapped a quick photo on my dress form of what it looks like and how you can kind of visualize what we're doing here. There is, um, and I may have shown you this picture before in another tutorial, but if you lay this on one shoulder like this, you're going to have the front coming down and the back, and you can sort of get an idea. This is half of our uh, sweater, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and show you the picture now, and you can see what I'm talking about. Okay, so the next thing you'll want to do is grab your other two cakes or other yarn that you'll be using. And what you're gonna do is um, make your second panel. Now, when you make your second panel, you wanna make it the same dimensions, uh, the same starting chain, etc. So you'll want to, if you need to, go back to the beginning of this tutorial and start over and make a second panel. So I got some dimensions here, and again, you can change the width of this. We talked a little bit about that at the beginning of this when we did our starting chain, and you can also change the length. Um, you, the picture I just showed, you could sort of see how long it was. Um, it's a nice, for, uh, for me and the dress form, et cetera, it's kind of like gonna be a knee length, maybe a little bit above the knee. Um, if you want it to be shorter, make your panel shorter, but you can kind of throw it over one shoulder and get that length as you're working on it. You can stop whenever you need to. But this panel is about 12 inches wide, and then it has a length of 70 inches, okay? So just to give you an idea of that. Again, you can totally customize, but I used exactly two cakes to get that 70 inch length, that 12 inch width, and I was able to save just a little tiny bit to seam later. We're gonna be seaming up under the arm and down, um, down either side, and then we're going to be seaming along the back. But we're not going to do that till next week. So go ahead and start and finish your second panel, same exact way you've done this one. And I wouldn't, I mean, personally, I'm not worried about the colors lining up. I kind of like this beautiful kind of mix of watercolor pastels and the glitter and um, the color changes. If you're concerned about that though, you can take your cake, like I mentioned before, and pull apart each section of color out of your cake. And if you need to, um, kind of stitch it up along with your other panel if you want them to match perfectly. I'm not gonna worry about that, but if you want to, that's how you can do it, okay? So go ahead and make your second panel, and then when that's finished, we'll rejoin again, and then we will be ready to kind of assemble all this next. So that is it for week two. Now keep working on your panels and when we rejoin next week for week three, we are gonna be seaming uh, the arms, the under the arm part and the back part up to construct our cardigan. So I will see you next week. And if you haven't yet, be sure and hop on over to the Ravelry group and the Facebook group so you can see what everybody's working on and ask questions and things like that. A lot of people like to share their work and it's fun to see what everybody's coming up with. So I will see you next week for week three where we're gonna put this all together. And meanwhile, you can work at your own pace the videos will be up forever, so if you're not quite ready by next week, it'll still be there uh, for you to check out at any time. Thanks so much for watching, and be sure and click the subscribe button to get all the latest FiberFlux video updates. Thanks again.